here, I'm a doctor in natural medicine and a researcher in the field of kidney health. I've been working in the medical field for more than a decade now and I've seen many changes in the way CKD is treated. So if you have CKD and your goal is staying dialysis free as long as possible, you must make sure you know about the 7 things that change in the way CKD is treated. Because, you see, in the span of a decade, we went from gently guiding the patient towards dialysis to making everything we can to avoid dialysis. Yes, we can do that now, and it's a huge momentous change that will be remembered in the history of medicine. And there are seven big changes in the treatment for CKD that came with this new mindset of actually treating the patients instead of just waiting for their kidneys to fail. Now guys, this also comes with a huge issue. Many patients are not informed and this is a problem if the treatments are changed so much but you still go by old standards. What you will get is, well, dialysis. So yeah, there are Seven big changes in the world of CKD you should know about if you want to save your kidneys and today we are going to make sure you know all about them. And I also want to show you five things that didn't change and never will. But before that, let's start with an example of a huge change that a lot of CKD patients seem to know nothing about. Number seven, potassium. So back in 2020, we went from forbidding high potassium foods to everyone with CKD to encouraging people to eat more fruit and vegetables, all right? And the reason? Because the more plant-based foods you eat, the longer you can delay dialysis. Yeah, low protein, high amount of fruit and vegetables means stable or even improved kidney function, says science. But of course, most plant-based foods are rich in potassium, which is fine by the way. And yet, this is from the comment section of double O kidney. Spinach is high in potassium, avocado is high in potassium, and so on. Yes, everything is high in potassium. But you see, you don't need to avoid high potassium foods anymore. That never worked and it was only a way to get you to start dialysis quicker. We know today that if your serum potassium is too high, the issue is caused by your medications, not your diet. Talk to your doctor. So it's clear that a lot of people are still stuck in 2019 and they still think they need to avoid potassium. And this is incredibly bad. It's really dangerous that so many patients are still convinced in 2024 that they need to avoid high potassium foods. You don't need to. And guys, if you think this info is useful, you should consider sharing this video on social media and also tapping the like button so more people will be able to see it. So in short, don't be afraid of fruit and veggies. Potassium was banned from the diet for kidney disease for all the wrong reasons. Make sure your serum levels are stable below 5.2 milli equivalents per liter and consult your doctor if they aren't. Okay, up next, phosphorus. Maybe not as many people are scared by phosphorus as they are by potassium and yet this is another big thing that changed in the renal diet and it's a huge change by the way. We used to tell patients they could eat no more than 800 milligrams a day of phosphorus. This lasted up until 2020 and it's no more a rule now. In fact, in 2020, the KDOQI, the board that made the guideline for CKD, changed that rule. So what changed, you may ask? There is no more a fixed amount of phosphorus you can have per day. You just need to watch your serum levels now. Which is still very important by the way, because while dietary potassium is actually good for your kidneys, it's alkalizing and it lowers blood pressure. Dietary phosphorus is actually a toxin. This is why we used to forbid people from eating a lot of whole grains, nuts, seeds, even mushrooms. We even used to tell people that white bread was better than whole grain bread. Well, that was a mistake. Because you see, we know today that phosphorus from plant-based foods is not well absorbed by the body. On the other hand, the benefits of whole grains, nuts, seeds are massive and they can easily make that little phosphorus you get 
worth its weight in gold. So in short, just like for the ban on potassium, the ban on phosphorus on plant-based foods was a mistake. But there is something that never changed about phosphorus intake and that never will that I will show you in the final part of the video. Before that, number five. Okay, this is a big change. Let's talk about personalization. This is another big change that's still taking place about the renal diet. So in the span of five, six years, we went from a diet that was based on what a patient could learn from a leaflet that was handled out from a dialysis clinic to a completely personalized and individualized diet. So today, if you have CKD in stage 3 or above, you are supposed to be referred to a dietitian, alright? They need to make a personalized diet for you based on your weight, stage of CKD, diabetes status, comorbidities, and more. This is important because those patients that are going to be eating based on that leaflet they receive from a dialysis clinic will need to do dialysis very soon. In short, if you have kidney disease, your diet needs to be customized for you and you only. Find a dietitian that knows what they are doing and that can prescribe your renal diet personalized for you. And one of the most important things that this personalization entails is Number four, protein intake. Okay guys, this is maybe the biggest change we have seen until now. Protein intake. Limiting protein intake is one of the main reasons why we are now able to tell the patient that dialysis can be delayed by years, if not decades. Yes, we went from, okay, you're in stage three, start finding a dialysis clinic near you, to if you stop eating steak and dairy, you'll be able to stay out of that dialysis clinic for a long time. Okay, it's a bit more complicated than that, but you see, limiting protein intake in people with kidney disease is not a new thing. Here in Italy, we have been doing that for decades. And I've been personally advocating for a low protein diet for so many years now. I was already telling people on YouTube to avoid protein back in 2018. The reason? Well, because I've personally seen that patients here in Italy were eating a protect pasta and they were able to maintain their kidney function stable for lots of years. On the other hand, people in the Philippines or in the United States who were not started on a low protein diet and without access to a protect food staples were reaching dialysis much, much faster. But what changed about protein intake, you may ask? Well, what changed is that today we have a guideline for protein intake that is coming directly from the KDOQI. As I was saying, the KDOQI publishes guidelines for the treatment of kidney disease on a global scale. It's also thanks to them that we are finally starting to see people from all around the globe and not just from countries with universal healthcare following a diet that delays dialysis. So yeah, in recent years, we went from you have to limit potassium to no more than 3,500 milligrams a day and prepare for dialysis to don't limit potassium, just limit protein to 0.60 gram per kilogram of body weight and your kidneys will last for another 20 years. And this is amazing if you ask me. But of course, it came with some issue as well since many patients are still reluctant today to completely stop eating meat, fish, dairy, and so on. So in short, if you have kidney disease, you need to follow a diet that severely restricts your protein intake. This is as long as you don't prefer doing dialysis. But as I was saying, many patients are still reluctant, especially those with diabetes. So let's talk about that for a moment. Because you see, the treatment for diabetes has seen some huge changes in the last years and it's still changing rapidly. Seriously, if you have diabetes, you must keep yourself up to date. First of all, because we know today that diabetes can be cured. Okay, technically it can be sent into remission, but this is not something that was really considered a possibility just a few years ago. Now guys, this changes a lot of things, especially for the patients, because a treatment that's aimed at just curbing the symptoms is completely different from a treatment that's aimed at sending diabetes into remission. So just a few years ago, all you could do with diabetes was taking blood sugar lowering medications and hope for the best. 
but today it's all different. A diabetes patient could choose today to do a bariatric surgery or to get started on Wigovi or Ozempic in order to drastically cut their caloric intake, lose a ton of weight and achieve remission from diabetes. And medications for diabetes and kidney disease have evolved drastically in the last few years. We even have prescriptions such as Forxiga that can be used to protect the kidneys and improve diabetes numbers as well. So yeah, the treatment for kidney disease is moving fast today, but the treatment for diabetes is going at breakneck speed. Now, the other big change in the way diabetes is treated in kidney disease patients is protein. This is especially important for patients that have stage 3 or higher kidney disease and diabetes as well. Doctors were used to tell patients with diabetes that protein was good for them, alright? Because protein-rich foods such as meat, cheese, eggs are not supposed to spike your blood sugar levels. But that was not actually accurate. We know today that protein-rich foods are actually going to make blood glucose management much more complex because they do cause your glucose to raise, alright? I mean, imagine eating more animal protein because you want to treat diabetes. Not going to work, sorry. We also know that red meat in particular is especially bad as it is linked to increased risk for type 2 diabetes. Yes, as you can see, this very, very large study conducted in the US on 216,695 participants confirmed very recently exactly that, alright? So if your goal is improving your diabetes status, red meat and animal-based foods are something you absolutely want to stay away from, especially if you also have kidney disease since your kidneys are also damaged by animal-based protein. And I know that many people are already going to scream at me in the comment section for posting these studies, but what do I know? I mean, I've only dedicated my whole career to helping people recovering from CKD. What do I even know about diabetes management? In short, diabetes management changed drastically in the last few years and patients need to stay updated. Achieving remission from diabetes is now considered a possibility as long as the right treatments and lifestyle changes are adopted. Okay guys, before I show you the two biggest and most significant changes I've witnessed in my career, a question. What are some things that never change in the treatment for CKD? So let's take a look at what never changed and probably never will. Sodium intake restriction never changed. As I was saying, we used to have several restrictions on mineral intakes, alright? We used to have potassium restricted to 3,500mg a day and that's no more. We used to have phosphorus restricted to 800mg a day and that's no more. We used to have sodium restricted to 1,500mg a day but while potassium and phosphorus restrictions are gone, the restriction on sodium is here to stay because there is a proven link between excess sodium intake and high blood pressure. Same for calories intake. Obesity is a known risk factor for many diseases, kidney disease included. This is not something that's going to change anytime soon. Same for exercising. Doctors have been telling people since forever to eat less and to move more. Even people in dialysis are supposed to exercise within the limits of their possibilities. That will never change. And yeah, another thing that never changes dialysis. If you would travel back in time to the 1950s in order to do a dialysis session, you would have a very similar experience to what most CKD patients experience today. And this is a bit unsettling. Imagine if dentists today use the same tools they had back in the 1950s. It will be extremely scary. So yeah, let's hope dialysis 2 will evolve in the next few years into treatment that's less invasive for the patient. Okay, one more thing that desperately needs to change in the treatment for hypertension. We are still prescribing ACE inhibitors, ARBs, and diuretics to most CKD patients even if the side effects these medications have are dramatic. Because even if these medicines are toxic for the kidneys, there is no better alternative. Or maybe there is? Let's take a look at the two biggest changes in the treatment for kidney disease now. Number two is the use of natural remedies as first-line treatment. Natural and herbal remedies, vitamins and other more natural supplements have grown tremendously in popularity over the past decade. Today, they are frequently prescribed before 
trying medications. And let me tell you one thing. It's amazing that natural treatments are more popular now. And no, I'm not saying that just because I'm a naturopath. It's because these treatments do work and in many cases they can be safer than prescription drugs if used correctly. Let's take the example of the treatment for hypertension. As I was saying, this treatment didn't really evolve enough in the last years and as a result, patients still have to do with ACE inhibitor and similar. But do you know how much does taking an ACE inhibitor lowers your blood pressure on average? About 10 over 5 millimeters of mercury, which is not that much if you think about how high many people's blood pressure is. In fact, it's far from uncommon to have to take high dose medications and to have to take several medications just for high blood pressure. But this will unleash hell on your body and in particular on your kidneys with side effects such as too high potassium levels and more. I've personally seen patients that once consulted about dietary and lifestyle changes and once started on some very safe supplements such as vitamin D, magnesium, and maybe cocutane or garlic were able to achieve even a 30 over 15 reduction in their blood pressure easily. Yeah, so three times the result they would have got with a prescription medication and none of the side effects. And guys, by the way, the results people are getting with Cockita never cease to amaze me. This is a very common nutritional deficiency in CKD patients and, well, supplementing it may really help with high blood pressure. By the way, if you want to learn more about how to lower your blood pressure naturally so you don't have to rely too much on medications, consider watching my recent video up here in also down description. And of course, one of the reasons why Cockita works so well in CKD patients is because it's an incredibly powerful antioxidant. So this brings us to the number one for today. This is what I consider the most significant step forward in the natural treatment for CKD today. Number one is antioxidant therapy. Guys, a recent discovery changed everything in the treatment for kidney disease. Science was recently able to prove that the higher antioxidant intake is actually capable of improving your kidney function. And I want to be very clear on this. People really don't realize how much of a difference antioxidants can make when it comes to kidney disease. And yet, a huge review of studies recently proved that in adults with chronic kidney disease, antioxidants improve kidney function. Now guys, as you can see, this comes from the Cochrane Library, alright? For those of you that are not familiar with the Cochrane Library, let's just say that we are talking about the best of the best when it comes to authority in the field of health research. So what this means is that today, if you are not taking antioxidants for your kidney health, you are missing out on a big change to improve your GFR and your creatinine levels. And if you want to learn everything you need to know about antioxidants, watch my last video. It's up here and also down in the description. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye.